This song's called Hallelujah. Um, it's one of my favorite songs. It's been covered a million times. Uh, all of them are better than this version, but this is the one you're stuck with. Here we go. <laughs> Well, I heard there was a secret chord that David played, and it would please the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? Well, it goes like this The fourth, the fifth The minor fall The major lift The baffled king Composing Hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 I love you, Lord, with all my heart. You've given me a brand new start, and I just want to say I'm thankful to you. But I've seen it on the marble arch That love is not a victory march It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah Hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 You know, this song was written by Leonard Cohen. A long time ago, he wasn't a Christian, he wasn't a believer. He just wrote this song about the life of David. I don't know how many of you guys grew up in the church, how many of you guys go, that's not my place to know or ask. But I grew up in this little country church called Mother's Home Free Will Baptist Church in Colquitt, Georgia. About 50 people went there. I was raised in the church, I was raised on the Bible, and I knew at five years old, everyone referred to David as a man after God's own heart. Even at five years old, I knew there was something wrong with that. And you know it too, because you've heard what's been said this week so far. I thought about it, even at five years old, why would he be chosen as the representation of a perfect, flawless God that we all serve? And I thought about it, I prayed about it, I grew up and I talked to pastors about it, and this is how I feel. Maybe none of us in this room ever have done or ever will do anything half as extreme as David did. But I know at least in my own life, I've never been half as contrite, half as broken or half as repentant as David was in the times that he let God down. When you read the Psalms, you read the words of a broken man who said, Oh God, out of the depths have I cried to thee. Please be attentive to the voice of my supplication. A man who said, Oh God, if thou should count us the iniquity, who among us would stand? You see, his heart was so broken. <laughs> so broken for God. And that's why we call him a man after God's own heart. It's not because of what he did right or what he did wrong. It's because of how perfectly broken he was in front of God for the times that he offended him and his family and his community.
That's something I can understand. Somebody that's supposed to do the right thing and doesn't because that's me every day of the week. I can under some, understand someone like Job in the Bible whose wife said, Job, curse God and die because he took everything from you. And Job says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I will maintain my ways before God Almighty. And I want to say those words and I want to mean them. That's why I like the word hallelujah. It says things I don't know how to say. The Bible says when we pray to God that the Holy Spirit talks to him with groanings that we can't muster. And he says things that we can't say on our behalf. And when there's blockage in my connection, when there's sin in the way, sometimes I just say the word hallelujah until I know what's next. And if I'm just being honest in front of a room of strangers, for me the word hallelujah means hallelujah. Be with my family as we deal with the loss of two loved ones in six weeks. It means hallelujah, keep my grandma safe and keep her here with me. It means hallelujah, help me as I watch my mother and father's relationships sort of crumble right in front of my face and ruin this illusion of what I thought a happy marriage was because it doesn't get any easier when you get older. I don't know if you say the word hallelujah, I don't know if you care. I'll tell you tonight, it can mean anything. It can mean hallelujah, help me in school. A hallelujah help me in this destructive relationship. A hallelujah, my father just lost his job. What's next? Give me a hallelujah, I feel lonely. A hallelujah, I feel ugly. A hallelujah, I feel stupid. A hallelujah, I feel worthless. A hallelujah, I'm sorry. A hallelujah, I love you. A hallelujah, forgive me. A hallelujah, have mercy on me, a sinner. Where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. You see, there's nothing we could ever do to make an infinite, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-loving, all-caring God care for us any more or care for us any less. Because the Bible says he's the friend that sticks closer than a brother. He says, come to me, you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my burden is easy and my yoke is light. And that's why at the end of the day, I will always say hallelujah. That's why at the end of the day, come danger or toil, or snare, or triumph, or tribulation, or epic failure, just an ignorance to the rules and how the world operates, or anything short of God taking me off of this earth at the end of the day, I will always say it is well. It is well with my soul. The word hallelujah will never go anywhere. It's our highest praise. And God hears it. But I gave my best. But it wasn't much. I couldn't reach. So I tried to touch. I told the truth. And I didn't come to fool you. But even though. It all went wrong I stand before The Lord of Saul With nothing On my tongue But hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thanks, God.